So this is the part 2 of our medicinal chemistry on nervous system. Now let's move forward to the introduction about our cholinergic and adrenergic drugs that belongs to the autonomic nervous system. So these drugs are these drugs under ANS are called the cholinergic drug and the adrenergic drug. If you can recall in the neurotransmitters that we have discussed in the previous part, we have the choly cholinergic and our adrenergic or our adrenaline. So these are the origin of our of our naming. It is according to our acetylcholine, the cholinergic, and then from epinephrine or adrenaline for adrenergic. Okay, cholinergic and adrenergic drugs both act by either stimulating or blocking receptors of our ANS. So they can either stop it or activate our receptors. So the cholinergic neuron, these are preganglionic fibers terminating in the adrenal medulla. So the autonomic ganglia, we have both um, parasympathetic and sympathetic neurons there. And on the postganglionic fibers, we have parasympathetic, parasympathetic division that uses acetylcholine as neurotransmitter. So this is the figure where our cholinergic neuron acts. So we have here the preganglionic neuron in the autonomic if sympathetic innervation of adrenal in adrenal medulla occurs. So acetylcholine will be released and the receiving receptor is the nicotinic receptor. Okay? And then and then in the sympathetic sympathetic um, nervous system, our acetylcholine, when released, it is also the nicotinic receptor that accepts. So, pwedeng si nicotinic receptor uh, maging uh, ang kanyang effect ay activation or there is inhibi inhibition. So, neuro neuroeffector, neurotransmitter, here meron tayong epinephrine going to the adrenergic receptor and to the adrenergic receptor. And the other hand, for parasympathetic pathway, our neurotransmitter or our neuroeffector, the, the receiving um, receptor here is the muscarinic receptor. Okay? Now, for the somatic naman, since it has no ganglia, it directly proceeds to our striated muscle for skeletal muscle, which we have a nicotinic receptor so this is the neurotransmission at cholinergic neurons it involves six sequential steps so first and foremost there is synthesis of our acetylcholine and then if you can recall there is uptake of our acetylcholine into our storage vesicle and then it will be released the neurotransmitter will be released into our um, uh, our our synapse here the presynaptic new receptor is also here so it can be a uh, reuptake or it can bind to the um the receptor in our muscle so binding to the receptor pwedeng sa postsynaptic receptor or pwedeng sa presynaptic receptor and then also the fifth step is the degradation of acetylcholine so the degradation will be now, uh, made possible by acetylcholinesterase, making acetylcholine become acetate and choline. So, the choline will be recycled going back to our presynaptic um, pre ganglia. Uh, moving forward, so, with the, cholin with the cholinergic receptor or other books call it cholinoceptors. It is divided to muscarinic and nicotinic receptor. So I have mentioned um, a while ago in the previous slide, these muscarinic and nicotinic receptors are found in the um, receive receiver or the receiving organ in our in our body or in the the internal organs that receives 
the parasympathetic or the sympathetic innervation of our autonomics. So, simuscarinic receptor again and nicotinic receptors can be distinguished from each other on the basis of their different affinities for agents that mimic the action of acetylcholine. So, it is if it mimics acetylcholine, it is called cholinomimetic agents or some books call it parasympathomimetic agent. Okay, so there is a figure here, letter A and letter B on muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor. So I want you to study these two figures and this will be your second set of question for this part. Discuss your interpretation about the figure that is presented to you in figure A and figure B. So you discuss what have you what have you observed and what is your understanding with regards to this process. Now let's move forward to the very main topic which is the pharmacology and medicinal chemistry of our cholinomimetic agents. So the parasympathetic nervous system is able to produce discrete changes in specific organs to mediate, for example, processes such as lacrimation, yung ating pagluha, salivation, or emptying of the bladder. So these functions, again, if you can remember, are initiated by preganglionic parasympathetic nerves. So this originates from our brain stem going for going forward to our spinal cord and to the different innervated organs. Also, we have postganglionic nerves from these structures that innervates the relevant organs that will allow our body to function. And they are being received by different receptors. So, paulit-ulit, these are our muscarinic and cholinergic receptor that is activated again by the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So I hope you can remember your pharmacology during undergraduate with this discussion. So the actions of release acetylcholine is um, based on the attachment to the receptor. So here is the structure of our acetylcholine. It is divided into three parts. We have the omnium part, which has the nitrogen and the four attachment of methyl group. And we have the ester linkage, or should we call it ester bridge, and then the acyl group. So this is our acetyl part here on the right side, and the choline part here on the left side. That is why it is called acetylcholine. So when it is Acti uh, it is deactivated by our acetylcholinesterase. It will um, divide. It will be divided into two: the acetyl and choline. So the choline will be reuptake based on the figure discussed previously. So our just have the direct acting first. Agonist activity or cholinomimetic activity of our of our drugs. If it's direct acting, yeah, it is constrained, uh, it is the prototype of our acetylcholine neurotransmitter. So, si acetylcholine, yung, nor, yung ating uh, catecholamine, which is naturally produced by the body, and the drugs that are directly acting or imitating cholinergic property or cholinergic action, are the prototype of our acetylcholine so they have the same action at all our at all of our muscarinic and nicotinic receptor subtypes so agonist activity is tightly constrained and requires that there will be no more than 5 atoms between our nitrogen and terminal hydrogen or a cycloxy group so in simpler terms, in order for a drug to have a direct acting cholinergic agonist activity, it should have at it should have a maximum of five atoms. So five atoms lang in between your nitrogen and terminal 
as I clock C group. So if we will go back to our, if we can remember the the slide canina with our with our acetylcholine, the the bridge there, the ester bridge should not be more than five atoms so that your cholinergic drug will still be considered or will be able to produce direct acting activity. Now, if there is substitution of the quaternary nitrogen with sulfur and phosphorus, it reduces activity. So, it is not, um, it is not advantageous if our nitrogen, which has four, supposed to be four methyl attachment, will be replaced with sulfur with sulfur and phosphorus. Now, if more than one of the methyl groups on the amine or in the nitrogen portion is altered by a larger alkyl, such as your ethyl, propyl, butyl, that will also gives us a reduction in activity. So, on the other words, the advantage structure that makes our cholinergic agonist becomes prototype of acetylcholine is it should be it should not be different from our acetylcholine original structure the bridge should not be more than five carbons and our nitrogen should not be replaced by sulfur phosphorus and bulky methyl or bulky alkyl substituents rather now moving forward addition of a methyl group on an alpha carbon results in increased selectivity for muscarinic versus nicotinic receptor so if the alpha carbon is the first carbon there in our in our acetyl side if you will if you will replace that alpha carbon with methyl group, that means there will be more selectivity with muscarinic receptor versus the nicotinic receptor. So kung, so kung dagdagan natin ng methyl group, yung ating alpha carbon, pagdating doon sa, sa organ, sa target organ, mas mag, mas mag attach ang ating acetylcholine molecule sa muscarinic receptors versus sa nicotinic receptors. Meron siyang affinity doon. This also reduces susceptibility to metabolism by cholinesterases, which allows prolonging the duration of action. Now, the substitution of the methyl group on the acycloxy to an amino group provides additional resistance to cholinesterase metabolism. That, for example, our carbacol and betanicol. So, with this statement here, for your second question in this part 2, I want you to look for the structure of carbacol and betanicol and study the statement that is given here. You encircle which is the methyl group on the acycloxy to an amino group which allows our Carbocol and betanicol becomes resistant to cholinesterase metabolism. So the susceptibility of our drugs to, to cholinesterase metabolism depends on this addition. And it will also significantly affect our activity or the, the, the drug activity or drug action in the body. So our carbocol, if you can recall, it produces brief meiosis to our to our eye so it is it is um, being used for eye surgery it it can control our intraocular pressure and it will help us with our uh yun, during the conduct of of surgery we have also betanicol what that is useful for urinary retention so please do your assignment about this part